Good morning, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Greetings. This is the first church of social media. I am Pastor Wilma Browder. How are y'all doing on this most marvelous Sunday? I know it's football Sunday. I know some of y'all might be watching y'all favorite football team, but I just pray that some way you're better to unattach from that and just pay attention to the word for a few moments. I won't be long before you, but I do have a great and powerful word today from the Lord. And as we start, we're just going to go into a quick moment of prayer. Our Father God, we come before you right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we so love you. We honor you, O oh God. We just praise your holy name, O oh Father. Father, right now, we just ask of you just to penetrate the people's hearts today. Penetrate their soul, O oh God. Arrest it right now in the mighty name of Jesus, O oh God. Open their ears and their eyes, O oh God, so they can see and hear what you have to say. Thus says the Lord. You have your way today, O oh God. And as you do that, O oh Father, I ask of you, O oh Lord, to remove me, O oh God, and fill me up with you, O oh God in the mighty name of Jesus, O oh God. May the souls be delivered today, O oh God, and may there be healing, O oh God, and may there be glorification through you, O oh Father. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 Again, we have a great and great and powerful word for today. The word is coming from, it's coming from two books today. The first one is Genesis 1, 4 through 5, and then it's John 20 through 11 through 19. Again, it's Genesis 1, 4 through 5, and John 20, 11 through 19. And the word says, Genesis 1, 4 through 5 would be read first. And God saw the light. And it was God, and it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. Let me say that again. And God saw the light, and that it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. So the evening and the morning were the first day. So now we go to John 20, 11 through 19. And it says, but Mary stood outside by the tomb weeping and she wept and she stooped down and looked into the tomb and she saw two angels in white sitting, one at the head and the other at the feet where the body of Jesus had lain. And then they said to her, woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, because they have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have lain him. Now, when she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there and did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you seeking? She supposing him to be the gardener said to him, sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him and I will take him away. Jesus said to Mary, she turned and said to him, Rabboni, which means teacher. And Jesus said to her, do not cling to me, for I have not yet ascended to my father. But go to my brethren and say to them, I am ascending to my father and your father and to my God and your God. And Mary Magdalene came and told the disciples that she had seen the Lord and that he had spoken these things to her. Then that same day at evening, which means this took place early in the morning, that same day at evening being the first day of the week, 
when the doors were shut, where the disciples were assembled for the fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in the midst and said to them, peace be with you. That is the reading of the word. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Mm, mm, mm. This is going to be a powerful message. I feel it, I feel it. Jesus. So today's message is titled, After the Morning After. I'm, I'm going to say it one more time in case you didn't hear me. Today's message is titled, After the Morning After. In 19, December 6, 1946, it was a fellow man born by the name of Frankie Beverly, better known as Howard Beverly. He's an American singer, musician, songwriter, and producer known primarily for his recordings uh, with the soul and funk band Maze. Beverly Foreign Mays originally called Raw Soul in his hometown of Philadelphia in 1970. After re relocating to the San Francisco and an introduction to Marvin Gaye, Mays went out to release nine gold albums and to create a large and devoted following. Beverly is the band's writer, producer, and lead singer. He is known for his distinctive, smooth baritone voice and charismatic stage presence. But I'm talking about them because they particularly came out with a song. It was called After the Morning After. And the song, the lyrics went a little bit like this in the very beginning of the song. It says, after the morning after, after the night before, when all of the fun is over, would you not want me no more? Oh, I want you in the worst kind of way. I would be lying to you if I said I did not want you to stay. I've got somebody and you got somebody too. What would they think about us? And what would I think about you? I know you think this is right, but what happens after tonight, will you be there even care? I want to know this right now. After the morning, after. Mm, mm, mm. My God, my God. This brings me back onto the scene where uh, Mary Magdalene had got to the tomb of Jesus, where Jesus had lain after he had been crucified. Now, Jesus had been crucified on that Friday evening. And then on that Sunday morning, uh, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb. So this is the after, the morning after, the night before when Jesus was crucified. Uh-huh, uh-huh, follow me, follow me. And then he says, when all of the fun is over. See, when Jesus had died, everybody had just felt some type of way. It had left a dark and gloomy over the whole atmosphere. You know how it is when you're going through something and, the, and then everything just don't seem right and then the sky gets gloomy and then your atmosphere gets gloomy causing you to feel gloomy inside. It's the same situation that happened on the scene right here. And Jesus is saying, hey, would you not want me no more? Even though they had laid him to rest and crucified him on that Friday night. He rose again on that Sunday morning. And this, and I'm about to bring to you how this song ties into the after, the morning after. After Jesus had been crucified, and then on that Sunday morning after he had rose from the dead. So we go into the first verse, first verse where Mary Magdalene, uh, she rises up on the scene and she came up to the tomb. 
And when she came up to the tomb, she was weeping because there was nobody in the tomb. But see, Jesus had sent two angels, two angels before her and was standing there. And the two angels said, why are you weeping? See, that brings me to my first point, people, which is the situation. See, Mary was in a situation where she was already starting to weep. And this situation takes place early in the morning because it was the morning after, the, the morning after, see? It took place early in the morning. And when she was weeping, Jesus, it was already two angels sitting there looking at her weeping. And they said, why are you weeping? It was a situation, see? But let me tell you something about a situation, okay? Let's break down the word situation, okay? Situation starts with the word sit. In other words, you are seating. You are in a location somewhere. You are in your atmosphere. You're in your domain. You see, a lot of times when you're sitting down, you have to realize that you will not be sitting down there for long. In other words, people, your situation <clears throat> does not become your stipulation because the simple fact is a situation is only temporary. You see, if we look right here in the tomb, right here where Mary Magdalene came up on the scene and she was weeping, it was already two angels there. In other words, Jesus was already, he knows your beginning to your end. So he already had two angels there, already there prepared for the situation. So in other words, whatever your situation is, I want you to get ready because listen, I want you to Listen, listen for the voice of God as he send your angels by. Whatever your situation may be, you get ready. You get ready for the shift in the atmosphere because your situation will not become your stipulation. Not today, not on our watch. Because ultimately, what God is trying to say to you all today, if you read my shirt, he is simply trying to say this, that hey, God is in control. Yes, God is in control. If you realize the whole thing, everything was already worked out before she even got there because the two angels was already sitting there. <clears throat> ah, phew, you missed it. Okay, so that means that means that if God already knows your beginning to your end, that means that and you already have victory. That means simply that, hey, the situation may not seem what it seems to be because you have to remind yourself that he already told you and promised you that you have victory. That means you already won. You already won. But I understand, I understand, I understand. You walk up to the tomb, you're looking for your Lord and Savior, and he's not there. I understand. So you automatically start weeping. You automatically start weeping. Like, who could do this? Who could take his body? But you're not realizing that, hey, God is in control. That's the same thing that's happening in your life today, in your situation today. God already knows the outcome. I need for you to trust the Lord in your situation, in your downest moment. Even though she was weeping early in the morning, which means it was still dark outside, you have to remember that joy will come in the morning because it's the after the morning after. <laughs> there will be glory. There will be glory. So as we're up on the scene with Mary Magdalene and she comes to the tomb and she's in her situation, as we look further down in the verses, um, <clears throat> as we look further down in the verses, we realize that, that Mary Magdalene is talking to Jesus, right? But to her, she doesn't realize she's talking to Jesus. She thought she was talking to the gardener, which brings me to my second point. My second point is the assumption. You see, assumption is another word for to uh, assume. And we all know that assuming it can get you in some bad places sometimes, you know? It can get you in some really bad places. And here, Mary Magdalene assumed she was talking to the gardener. Sometimes that God puts us in a situation that you had your angels there and you're not realizing who you're talking to. Because sometimes God will send 
an angel your way. Now, he may not look like an angel. He may be dressed with his pants sagging, his hat turned backwards, a cigar in his mouth, and he might have your next blessing. So be careful who we turn away. Be careful who is in our atmosphere because you never know who God's going to send to bless you. Who have you turned away recently? What blessing have you turned to down recently? You have to pay attention and discern people. You cannot automatically <clears throat> judge a book by its cover because you never know in that book could be your blessing. In that book, book could be your shift. In that book could be your turnaround. In that book could be your destiny. In that book could be your future. But you have to pay attention. You have to discern. You cannot assume because assume will get you nowhere. You should know for sure who it is. Because if you trust in the Lord, it won't be no assumption. Because you know your Lord and Savior, he is coming to save the situation. He is coming to stay, save the situation. Just as when Jesus came on the scene, they said that he stood in the midst of the disciples. That means that whatever your situation is, whatever your assumption is, you have to assume and know for sure that the Lord and Savior is coming to save your situation. He's coming to get you out of that situation. Whatever that bad situation is, whatever that stressful situation is, know that the Lord has your back. Because ultimately, if you don't remember nothing else I say, remember this, that, hey, God is in control. He's in control of your situation. He's in control of your assumption. And most of all, he lets us know right here. In verse, in verse number 18, he lets us know that, hey, he lets us know that peace will be with you. In verse number 19, he lets us know that peace will be with you, which means there is a declaration. That's my third point, people. There's a declaration. A declaration means there's a to declare without a shadow of a doubt. This is going to happen. Peace will be with you. No matter what your situation is, no matter what your assumption is of the situation or whatever is going on, peace will be with you. Because it's the morning after. After. That means, let me break it down for you. Okay. In Genesis, God said that he, right here, Moses was saying, and God saw the light and that it was good, right? And then he says, and God divided the light from the darkness. Okay. Okay. So, when Mary Magdalene got to the tomb, and Jesus' body was gone. I want you to realize that it was it was morning, but it was morning to the point where the sun hadn't came up yet. Okay, so it was still slightly dark. So God called the light day, and the darkness He called night. So the evening and the morning were the first day. In other words, the evening and the morning. Where the Seth first day. See, evening, when it's evening, it's slightly dark. You know, it's slightly dark. So in other words, that, and then it comes the sun. Okay, which be in the morning. So he's basically saying that, hey, whatever your dark situation is, it may seem dark now and you can't see what's going on and you don't know what's about to happen. But I'm here to tell you that when the morning comes and the sun is rising, good Lord Almighty, the sun is rising, which is the Holy Spirit, which is Jesus, your Lord and Savior. He is going to save the day, people. He's going to save it in the nick of time. You just got to hold on while you're in that darkness. And when you hold on while you're in that darkness, you would know that after the morning after, there will be glory. There will be peace among you because he said he declared it would be peace with you. 
No matter what you do, no matter what you're going through, he wants you to know that after the morning after, there will be glory. There will be glory. There will be glory. There will be glory. There will be a healing upon your situation. There will be a healing upon this nation. All you got to do is grab hold and stand strong when you're in the darkness. Whatever your storm is that you're going through, you must know that Jesus is on your side. He is in your situation. And remember that your situation is on temporary. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Your situation is only temporary. And don't assume, don't assume, don't assume that he's not going to be there for you. Don't assume your situation is not going to turn around. Because in the end, there is a declaration that's already been made, people. And it is that peace will be with you and glory will be with you. Because after the morning after, my God, my God, I hope today's word has touched somebody. I hope it touched somebody and I hope you realize that after the morning after there will be glory. There will be peace with you and your situation will change. Weeping may endure for the night, but joy cometh in the morning. I don't know who this message is for, but I hope it pierces your heart today. And is there somebody out there today that might want to give their life to Christ to turn that situation around, to turn your darkness to the light? to remember that the morning after Jesus, the morning after they crucified our Lord and Savior, he died on the cross for your sins, people, and for your salvation. And it's free. It is free. Look, just email us, firstchurchofsocialmedia at gmail.com. We are waiting for you. We have people waiting for you so we can give you that salvation you've been looking for was after the morning after and look maybe you want to be a part of this ministry we got people waiting by you just email us at firstchurchofsocialmedia at gmail.com and hey even if you just need a prayer request you email us at firstchurchofsocialmedia at gmail.com Maybe you want to sow a seed into this ministry. You can do that by cash apping us. It's dollar sign F-C-O-S-M. Again, that's dollar sign F-C-O-S-M. And remember, people, after the morning, after, there will be glory. Hallelujah. And if you want to sow into this ministry and purchase today's shirt that I'm wearing, God is in control because awesomely, that's what it's all about to remember that, hey, God is in control. We got match and match. You can get the whole set for uh, $50. <clears throat> the shirt by itself is $25 and the mask is $20 and then shipping and handling. Total price, $50 for both. You can come in any color you want. Rhinestones come in any color you want. And remember, God is in control. Hey. This is Pastor Wilmer Browder at the First Church of Social Media. We love you all. You all have a blessed week. I hope your football team wins, but Cowboys Trump, we ain't gonna get into that. But I love you all. God bless you all. May the grace of God be before you all and cover you all throughout the week. And I love you all. God bless. <laughs>